welcome to another exciting Let's Game, starring me, L1011 Widebody, and today we're going to be <laughs> playing this almost a game. It's called Star Trek Starship Creator. We start off as logging in as an admiral to be our fleet. So, Admiral L1011 Widebody will set it to advanced because I am advanced in the methods of Star Trek. Processing. Exempt. And what you get to do, you get to choose to build your own starships, sort of. Uh, it's a, basically what it is this is like a uh, it would be like a flash game now but uh, this is uh, from 2001 I believe uh, is from uh, who, who is this uh, Simon and Schuster I'm looking at the back of the CD uh, the back of the um, the back of the uh, case here. I believe it's Simon and Schuster. So this was fancy and exciting, and you can do. Let's so let's let's start building a starship. Resource cost twenty one seventy credits. Enter new registry number um one seven o two. <laughs> USS Enterprise. Oh, what happened to... Okay. So you got this, you could choose your nice... You get a good selection of uh, different ship classes that you're familiar with from the show. Sovereign... Sovereign... Sovereign class from the uh, First Contact. Intrepid class from Star Trek Voyager. Whoops. Whoa. Uh, Klingon Bird of Prey. Uh, Galaxy class from uh, Next Generation. The Defiant from uh, Deep Space Nine. Uh, Sovereign. Akira class. And I guess that's it. There were some... So, this is... There's two versions of this game thing. There's the, uh... Um... The original version, and there's Warp 2. And this is... I'm playing the Warp 2 version, which doesn't have the Miranda class and the Excelsior class, unfortunately. You don't get to see them. I like this interface, it looks very Star Trekky. What is update? This utility will allow you to fly, build and fly other ships besides the classes provided on the warp 2. Do you own a copy of another Starship Creator CD? I do, but I can't find it, unfortunately. So I'm gonna say no. Anyway. Commencing assembly. Proceed. New Constitution class. Starfleet vessel. You get your choice of different nacelles. You just kind of drag them, drop them. Like those ones, they look like uh, fighter jets or something. Like that. Fancy different saucer things. It's kind of exciting. This one looks like it has a ray gun on the front, but it doesn't. This one's kind of shaped like a arrowhead. Processing. Oh, and then you can view it in 3D. Assembling structure. Which is pretty cool. This was this was neat at the time. 
because this is this is 2000, 2001, I believe is when this game came out. So Star Trek was uh, still wasn't yet in its renaissance like it is now. It was on its uh, last legs, more or less with the uh, the Enterprise and the Voyager running out of time and stuff. Let's see. Okay. Uh, proceed. Processing. Let's give it a name. Let's, uh, USS Arrowhead. Because it looks like an arrowhead. NCC-1702. Confirm name and structure. Yay. Processing. And now here comes all the nerdy parts. Which is actually kind of fun if you're really into the into the whole uh, Star Trek kind of things. So you ship info. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Oop. I want to close that. So you have to go. You go by uh, compartment. You uh, have some information about each different class of engine and stuff. You can. Install improved propulsion system, reinforced plasma injectors, higher output than class A. So, and you can install that. Impulse systems, every ship needs a warp drive so you can find a warp drive, enhance power transfer conduit, lower power drain, and higher field output than the older Type 2 system. Power transfer conduits and warp engine nacelles tuned to maximum warp factor 9. So there's a whole bunch of uh, fluff text that's nice in here if you want to read that. If you really get into the uh, the whole Star Trek starship thing, uh, it's pretty cool if you, if you like that kind of stuff. And then you can install the warp drive. Uh, you see the warp drive isn't like there it is. You know, all going through the systems. Then you can install different kinds of uh, power plants. So like, and it tells you what, how much power generation and resource costs. So, where's our um? Resource budget is 38,000 million credits. So we should have enough for a decent ship. So let's pick some of these. Antimatter storage pods. Some of these you can pick different amounts. But, oh. If you hold down the button for more than a thirteenth of a second, it scrolls all the way through. Contains a maximum value of two volume of three hundred cubic meters of antimatter per pod. Two hundred cubic meters, one hundred cubic meters. Um yeah. We'll install the most cubic meters of antimatter because that's what matters. 4 gigawatts, 1 gigawatt, 10 gigawatts. Traditional fusion generator consumes deuterium. So you have all these Starship systems and stuff. Install the fancy stuff. Deuterium storage tank. 2500 kilograms. Contains the fuel for the fusion reactor. Power distribution network. Some of these 
things have like you can s slide up and down how effective how efficient you want your things to be it uh costs more so but I always go to the top of the line because I don't really feel a need anyway auxiliary power generator so some of these are not required redundancy the most redundant of redundancies weapons three phasers a directed energy weapon used by Federation Starfleet vessels prior to 2295 so you're restricted um, to time based on your um, oops I'm zooming in too far based on what class you choose to which time you can use the different weapons install phasers photon torpedoes self-propelled missiles containing small quantities of matter we want to have missile launchers you can have 200 torpedoes but you really don't need that many in a mission so yeah, I don't know, 23 sounds good to me defense navigational deflector is important because it keeps the ship from running into stuff while it's warping shields shields up down to 18,000 in our budget oh science systems Oh, these are all different kinds of sensors. High energy proton spectrometry cluster. Wide angle EM radiation imaging scanner. Passive imaging gamma infrared Variable band optical imaging magma. Steerable life form analysis instrument cluster. Active magnetic interference. Subspace, 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 subspace. Ten subspaces. No. Ah, uh, let's. Oh, and there's probes. Different probes. Oh, and it animates too when you click on things. Probe terrestrial sensor probe. Sensor probe. Fancy probes. Look at all those animations. They're exciting and new. Laboratories. Planetary Science Laboratory. A facility designed for conducting geological and atmospheric surveys. Exobiology. Cultural Anthropology. Well, the mission is to explore and stuff. Facility, oh, stellar cartography. Uh, so, um, I guess we'll install that. Command and control. You have to have a computer core. We'll have three cores because this is the fanciest ship in the fleet. Data network. Yes. The little popcorns that go around. Communications. Local communications. Internal communications. Set the speed speed to be faster in kiloquads, which is not actually a measurement of anything. So let's install some of these so we can talk to ourselves. I want to make sure I have enough budget left over for a crew. Because that's important. 
Transporter and cargo. I suppose we should have a shuttle bay. Large facility used for maintenance, launching, and recovery of shuttlecraft. Oh, and there's so many different kinds of shuttlecraft. Type 6, Type 15A. Type 15. Type 16. And they all do different kinds of things. Um, let's install two of these. Transporters! Because you, you need to beam up Scotty. Number of pads, six. And then you need targeting scanners. I guess. Installed. Um, and then emitters. Install one of those. Tractor beams. I'm running out of money though. Nine hundred and nine nine thousand two hundred and five. Let's not we don't need a tractor beam. We do need a life support system though. Life support system simulating class M planet environmental conditions. Uh it doesn't need to be that redundant. Living quarters, I suppose. Spartan or modest. Small one person apartments provide adequate comfort and privacy for short term missions. Bunk style sleeping quarters with closets for personal items typically used for battleships and freighters. Let's have all the crew in Spartan little compartments. Medical systems have a sick bay. So that bones can wander around in it. Facilities. Arboretum. Recreational facility filled with various flora and fauna of many class M planets. A place for meditation, relaxation, and escape from the daily grind of life on a starship. Also a crew lounge. No, we can't afford that. Utilities. Fundamental Fun fundamental group of starship process and control systems required to maintain a habitable operating environment. Includes inertial dampening field, artificial gravity, water supply, waste collection and recycling. Oh yeah. The toilets on the Enterprise. Okay, I better install those. And you probably should have a turbo lift. And a structural integrity field so that we don't run into stuff. I guess. So we have 3,000 credits left. I guess to build a. to have a crew. And then you can choose who you want. Oh, that's expensive for your crew. And there's a whole list of lots of different people from Star Trek. I'm sure you recognize most of these people. Although, I believe this only, it's limited because it's the, uh, it's the Constitution class, it's limited to, like, the old-timey people. Um, let's see. We don't have a lot of money left. Captain assigned. <laughs> Thank you.
Chief Engineer, eh? Um. Resource allocation exhausted. Resource credits may be earned by completing a mission or made available through removal of pre-assigned officers. I have spent too much money on stuff. Um, let's find some cheaper stuff, I guess. Um, uh, let's remove the uh, auxiliary power. We don't need that. Oops. This one's cheaper. Resource allocation exhausted. Oh, whatever. Let's have less of these. One. Two. Three. Have a smaller fusion reactor, I guess. That should be enough to afford a crew. It's a good thing Starfleet doesn't have a use for money because I don't have any. Let's chief give engineer assigned. this guy to be the chief engineer, security officer. Uh, let's see. Savic will be security our security officer. Security officer. Communications officer. Mira Romaine. That sounds good. Communications officer assigned. First officer. Montgomery Scott. That sounds good. First officer assigned. Scotty will be our first officer. Science officer. Spock. Sure. Science officer assigned. Chief medical officer. Let's pick <laughs> Sulu. Captain Terrell Uhura. Dimitri Valtain, and Deirdre Wally. Chief Medical Officer assigned. And a counselor. Robert Wesley. Counselor assigned. Personnel allocation by functional specialization. And you can, like, allocate how many people you want for each thingamajig. If you wanted to get into that, you can s s have more engineering. Whoops. Zzz. More power. Science. Security. Support. No civilians. Unfortunately, well, no command. Wow, that would be the worst ship ever. It already is, kind of. Just, ugh. Reset. <laughs> so fortunately, these old-timey games, you click on them and they're kind of finicky. Processing. Okay. Now that we've built our starship, let's do a mission! Encounter enemy at Racto 4. Let's do that. Are you ready for the excitement of doing missions in Starship Creator? Processing. Here we go. Prepare to get underway. Fusion power system startup. Navigational deflector online. Warp power generation startup. Impulse engine startup. Preparing to depart. All of them take us out.
It does it kind of have this nice Star Trek music to it. Though. Ooh, very short cutscene. Yeah, it doesn't really run very well under uh, Windows 7 anymore. Initiate a long range scan of the destination. Long range scan, long range scan unsuccessful. Well, I couldn't afford scanners, so. <laughs> oh, what's that? I sense the presence of a wormhole. That was kind of cool. Or slugged in. And you basically just sit here while your crew does stuff. Listen to this exciting corresponding music. Accelerate! Accelerate! Thrilling excitement! And this is right about the point where I started kind of giving up. Unfortunately. Course locked in! Course locked in! Yep. That's about all there is to it. What's stealth? Processing. Entering stealth mode will restart the current mission simulation with the U Oh, I don't want to do that. Return. Processing. View out. Oh, run mission. Standing by, now we'll proceed. Leaving the mission screen will abort. No, I don't want to. Oh, rocks! Asteroid field, use caution. 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 Repeatedly! Those are some dangerous asteroids. Can this ship go any faster? Ugh. Status. Systems damage. Vessel health engineering rating 600. General efficiency 25%. That's not good. Support systems operating efficiency. What? Port systems operating 0%. Impulse engine. Our crappy ship is crappy. Uh. Well, um. Anyway, eventually you run into, like, the stuff, and the scripted missions are, like, you. Stuff happens and it basically kind of it, it looks at whether your ship has the whatever device or drive needed to defeat the enemy or whatever and it looks at your crew to whether they're capable of it or whatever And it tells you if you win, but basically you just kind of sit here and watch your ships go around. And that's about it. Processing. Let's go build some other funky looking ships. Here, let's... No, no, no. Uh 
Okay. Resource allocation exhausted. Oh, I don't have enough money to buy one. Whatever. Processing. Oh. Yeah, I don't Processing. really have the patience to play through all these missions and there's quite a few missions. Processing. Please choose the ship from the ship class thing. Processing. Well, I'm out of money, so I can't afford any more ships. Processing. Let's quit. The end. That was fun. Please log on to our website for hints, tips, tutorials, and eventually new features for you to download like being able to run missions on your pilot or visor don't show this screen again